Hi everyone, this is the February 5th CHAMP instructional design meeting. We're going to cover certificates, courses, and MOOC development. Um, our agenda today is go over course certificates and cohort groups, timelines, CCBY, and Creative Common Attributions, intellectual property list, publishing to OER, taking a course from face-to-face -to, -face to hybrid, and if there's any interest in flipped course design, we're going to go ahead and discuss that. I want to leave time for questions and concerns you might have regarding the short time frame of our instructional design period today. Um, our first uh, information is going to be the cohort teams and content leads and where you can expect materials to come in. They're divided into four groups, machining, welding, engineering graphics, and electromechanical. Our leads, content leads for that, electromechanical is still to be determined. Engineering graphics, they don't have a lead but they have content experts and those are those. Machining and welding each have a con uh, content lead. Our timelines, if you have an existing course, by June 2014 you should have a master course so that we can transfer it to cohort colleges. If you have a brand new course you're developing, we need to have it by October so that we can send it out to the um, colleges for dissemination. And if you're doing a new certificate, new course by October uh, beginning of November so that they can do it on theirs. Definition of course is existing, common, new build. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Our MOOC developments, math is June 2014. Employability is actually going to be launched November 14th. So that means content is September and October. February is credit for prior learning. Uh, CC, CBY, and Creative Commons attributions. <clears throat> Anything that is produced under grant funding must be open. Here's the language from the RFP. It's very, very specific and you can find information on that. Uh, to go into more details, in general, if that grant funds were used to create material, those materials must be CCBY licensed. Any courses created or revised and promoted on a website purchased with C grant funds has to be CCBY. Um, if there was a course or course materials in development prior to the start of the grant that was completed after the grant started and is being marketed as TAC related, it has to be CCBY. Think about quizzes, handouts, surveys, websites, handbooks. Um, you need to keep intellectual property rights listed. Um, the only work that's developed by the grantee with the grant funds is required to be licensed under CCBY. Uh, Pre-existing is not and third party is not. Uh, make sure you put the DOL attribution on anything that is out there in the public, including flyers and handouts and pamphlets and websites. Every college needs a CCCBY license and attribution. You go to the Creative Commons, which is www.creativecommons.org. You will actually then go to choose a license. And it's always going to be CCBY with no other contingencies. You can't say it has to share alike. You can't say it can't be non-commercial. Um, it has to be the most basic CCBY license. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to log into the creativecommons.org, go to choose, and then you're going to choose is it shared, is it commercial use, yes. Then in the lower left-hand corner, you can actually put the title of the work, who actually is the author, the actual uh, website, whether it's going to be your school website. I usually put cccs.edu forward slash champ. Um, and then on the lower left hand, uh, right hand corner, it gives you the CCBY logo, which is the license plus the wording beneath it. And then if you actually have to use an embed code, it's right below it. And the first time you create this, if you have any questions at all, call me and I'll lead you through it. So that's not a problem. Um, but once you actually get the hang of it, you can actually have one generic license that gives generic college information. And then if you actually have material that you're, that you're publishing to CCBY from a specific instructor, you want to actually give that specific instructor um, credit for that. So you're going to actually put um, in the attribute, um, name, the instructor's name on that. So you might end up with three or four different versions of a CCBY license. The actual logo will stay the same, but the attribution will be different. Um, so this is what is right now um, on mine. It's the CHAMP Certificates, Courses, and MOOC 
in development by Brenda Perea is licensed under Creative Commons. Um, my act attribution ex example is this workforce solution created by Colorado Health Advanced Manufacturing Program is licensed under Creative Commons, and that's the embed code for the web pages. This is also different from CHAMP 1 and 2. CHAMP 1 and 2, we could develop our own licenses, and the only metadata tag that we needed to actually have was TAC, T-A-A-C-C-C-T, as well as C-O-E-T-C. With TAC 3, they have given us these data tags, which I'll send out to everybody, that have to be on all um, metadata fields as well as you'll notice the lower, the lower right-hand corner, put in your college full, uh, full name and your college's initial. So you're going to put in uh, Pueblo Community College, and then your next data tag, uh, metadata tag, is going to be PCC. And if you want to add anything else like engineering graphics, CAD course, you're welcome to do that. But the, what, the data tags you actually have on the screen are required by DOL this time. Does that make sense? And I'll go ahead and post those on the instructional design base camp so everybody has those. Um, intellectual property list. From October, if you were producing any content, whether it's pamphlets, training materials, websites, anything that is there, you need to document it just like you would an actual property list, a desk, a chair, a machine. Um, so here's some examples. There's a video list. If you create videos, if you create other content, it's there. Um, you'll notice at the bottom of this slide, I actually have an actual TAC1 um, URL list, and I'm not sure if everybody actually has seen that. Um, because whatever is published here at the system office, I keep track of. I know Alice has done that. Um, CMC, everybody, everybody, everybody's colleges has it. So this is actually will be eventually sent with all the other grant paperwork to verify what we've done in intellectual, intellectual property. So I have the overview page. I have the dev ed and other OE, OER courses listed by colleges. I have the energy college information. I have all the OER pages created by me, whether it was material sent to me and mo all of this stuff was sent to me or I grabbed off of somebody else's B2L because they do not have the capability to publish to OER. And then I have all the OER websites I created. And that this becomes an official DOL document. So everybody should start keeping one document or one document per department or somehow that you can all bring together in one place that's going to document all of your intellectual property, whether it's a website, a pamphlet, a training material, and there's that. Um, so then there's um, questions as to finding open resources. Um, I just downloaded a 62-module advanced manufacturing um, open resource, and I actually haven't opened it yet. So I just need to find out what it was. It was suggested on one of the DOL trainings um, that during TAC2, there's a college out there that produced all of their materials in OER format, and they put it in a zipped file. So I have that. So I'm going to open it up and see if there's anything we can share. Um, so finding open educational resources. Remember the CHAMP URL dashboard. Anything in purple in the lower left-hand corner is all open educational resources that are specific either to advanced manufacturing or Merlot. Um, anything in the top right yellow tends to be um, credit for prior learning stuff. Anything in red is industry-specific websites. So if you have a website that you found anything that you need shared out, send it to me and I'll put it up on the back dashboard that's open for everyone. Um, there's also open for us. Search Creative Commons, OER Commons, um, MIT has courses that are out there, especially for engineering and technical kind of stuff. MIT has everything. Um, you can always search Merlot or Connections for materials. 
I'm also going to put together a document that actually has specific courses within our advanced manufacturing courses that the TAC-1 grant has already published in open so that you'll have those resources to use. <clears throat> and the very last part kind of of our, our area is what now? You know you have to create information and courses, and then you actually have to push those and publish those to open. So it's creating open resources. Um, <clears throat> is there a central repository? Not yet, because I've asked for DOL and the um, Workforce 3.1 group to create a central repository because Merlot is, is more academic, not necessarily competency-based. Um, but they haven't gotten back on me that. So these are all the places you can publish to open. Our official channel, unless you're using Canvas as your LMS, will be merlot.org. Um, and then so keep all of the URLs, and then once you get your stuff published to OER, you'll send the URL to me, and I'll put it on the CHAMP website as documentation to DOL, as well as YouTube internal documentation. The steps to pu publishing, there's six, six steps. You've already you will have already created a CCBY license. You'll need to create a college-specific user profile on Merlot.org. Um, it's much easier to create one user profile on Merlot.org for the whole project, the CHAMP project, rather than having eight other people create um, user profiles on Merlot because it's much harder to track your web pages and, and uh, websites and courses if you have eight different people contributing. They can all log in under the same user profile, but just create one. Um, create a college-specific CHAMP Google account. Within that CHAMP Google account, create a YouTube channel. Um, create a college-specific CHAMP slide-sharing account. Here at the system office, we, we use SlideShare. Um, and then create a college-specific website or web page within your college's website to list all the open resources. And the sixth one is so that you can actually um, ver um, show proof to DOL that your material is in open format, and that will give you a list of all your open resources other than a static um, spreadsheet or Word document. So you'll create the college-specific CCBY license. You'll create a specific user profile. This is my profile. It says Brenda Prea, my email address, gives my job title. <clears throat> and for CHAMP, we are workforce development, industrial education, career tech education. That's what discipline we're actually under. And of course, Handouts, outlines, descriptions, lectures, surveys, anything like that needs to be published to open. Um, and then you're going to have instructors who will say that, but you posted my stuff. Am I going to get credit? Yes, they will because you're first going to make the actual course public. And this information, when you post your first course, call me and I'll, work, I'll walk you through the steps or we'll have another webinar that actually shows you all the steps needed to actually post a course to open. So you, after you get the content in, you'll make the course public. You'll choose another uh, a CCBY license within Merlot. Then you'll contribute the course to Merlot. And on the second to the last actual step, this is where you actually give credit to the faculty or instructor who created the material. So you'll give the first name, the last name, their email address, and their organization, and that instructor or faculty will actually receive an email from Merlot saying, your material has been posted in Merlot. Um, you're going to have to create a college-specific Google account. Why? Um, <clears throat> because there, you won't necessarily want to publish all of your documents if it's a training manual, a handbook, a flyer to Merlot.org, but it needs to be in open format. So Google gives you a public URL when you publish it. Um, so I created uh, the profile I have for just CCCS, and it's there. 
Um, and this is the specific one for um, COEX. Um, and remember that all videos need to be in open format. That's why you, you create a college-specific YouTube channel within that Google account that is only for CHAMP. And why is that? It means that DOL is now requiring that all videos not be housed or gatekeeped. It has to be in open format. So that means it can't be on your college LMS and access through there. It cannot be on your media server, your college media server, because that's gatekeeped. And it should not be on the instructor or the faculty's own YouTube channel because DOL has learned from TAC 1 and TAC 2 that that faculty actually leaves the institution. They take the public URL with them when they leave. So they can actually disable all those videos and the content then becomes useless. Um, however, if your department has already set up its own YouTube channel, you can use that. NJC has their own YouTube channel for their um, wind turbine function um, program. And since that is not necessarily fac uh, faculty owned, it will stay with the institution, stay with the program, then you can use that as a public forum for publishing your videos. Is there any questions on that? <clears throat> um, and Jen actually wrote in the chat, chat one that um, Creative Commons has an OER course through Canvas. It starts soon, I think um, this week maybe. Um, also, there are all sorts of information on one of the websites. It's the Open For Us, O-P-E-N For Us dot org, which is the DOL sponsored OER um, information. So there's that as well. <clears throat> and Jen, if you could actually give me the information on um, the C uh, Creative Commons license through Canvas, I'll go ahead and publish it to, or you can publish it to the base camp. Um, create a college specific slide sharing account. If you don't want to use SlideShare, that's fine. There are other slide rocket is out there. There's a lot of freeware that's out there. Why? Because all presentations, whether it's in a course or used as training, need to be published as open. Um, with the YouTube channel, you have the choice to either make it public so that if they do a search for it, it can be found, or what I have chosen to do is make it unlisted as long as they have the URL, which is in the courses or in the presentation, they have access to the YouTube channel as well as any of the slide shares. Um, do I have any? Do I have any other questions? I mean, I'm going through this really fast, and there's a lot of information, and I don't want to dismiss anybody's concerns. Okay. All right, so make sure that you're creating um, a website or a web page within your college official website or to post your open resources. Um, and that's for documentation to DOL that not only do you have a paper copy of all the open resources that you've actually um, created intellectual property and actually have it published as open, but there's physical proof. This is a CHAMP, the main CHAMP site. So right now we have open resources of credit for prior learning stuff, job description stuff, um, intellectual property list. As soon as I start getting OER URL from the colleges, um, or if I start publishing OER, it's actually going to go on the ccs.edu forward slash champ forward slash projects page divided by cohort groups. So in machining, we're going to have accordion pleats. So every single college that is in that machining group, which is CCD, Front Range, uh, Pikes Peak, Pueblo, and Red Rock, you'll click on the actual college, and it'll do a drop-down menu. And either by certificate, I think it's going to be by certificate, it's actually going to show you what OER has already been published for that certificate. Um, 
Does anybody have any question about that? That's at the uh, the system level. Um, so <clears throat> at your own college, you might want to figure out how to do that. <clears throat> um, if you are converting an con existing course to hybrid, there's a infographic as well as a manual that I've put up on the instructional design website. Um, and if you're interested in flipping a course, I have an uh, infographic as well as material that I can help you flip a course. Um, since you're having to touch all the courses anyway, <clears throat> those are your options. Um, and I have nothing else. I've fed through that um, as quickly as possible to be able to give you guys enough time to actually bring up your concerns. So I'm going to go ahead and open everybody's mic. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. This is John. Um, just, a, just a simple question to start with. Are all of the briefing points, your slides, are those available at this? Well. Where are they available for it? Wait, give me, can you repeat that? There was some feedback I didn't hear. <clears throat> all of the briefing points, all of the slides you have just talked to, are those available for us to download? Absolutely. If you are in base camp, and I'm not sure who is actually in the base camp, there's a CHAMP instructional design group. If you are not in this group, I can invite you. But I have a list of all the documents that are in there. And then the, the PowerPoint is actually up here. I'm adding it right now. Uh, instruction design group. If you could invite me, that would be great. All right. So I've got John that wants to be invited to the base camp. Is there anybody else? Could you invite Amy Fry as well, please? Spell the last name. R Y. Okay. <clears throat> anybody you. else? Hey, Alice. Hold on. There you go. How can I help you, Alice? Uh, yes, please invite me also. I'll see that. Uh, I'm sorry, Alice. I didn't hear that. Just invite me, please. Okay. All right. Um, and the only other thing I actually have, if there's no other questions, um, Brendan, uh, this is John. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, if Jen came through, if you could add Jen Gutierrez, oh, please. Okay. Um, Connie, the question was. Um, Alice wanted to be added to the instructional design cohort group in base camp, and John has listed Amy Wright and Ben Gutierrez to actually be added to the group. So that's that's basically what the questions were, was whether they could be added or not. Do we have any other um, questions? Um, the only other thing I have for this is this is our only first meeting that's on a Wednesday. All the other meetings will be the first Thursday of the month. Um, and half of it will be like, I'm going to say 15 to 20 minutes. Our information is going to be disseminated from the monthly advisory council meeting, whether they're struggling with content or they have courses ready to distribute or whatever happens at the advisory group main meeting will be passed down to the instructional design group because you are the actual um, 
I was going to say workforces, but that's such a bad term. It's, but you are the ones who are going to be um, actually ensuring that the faculty are able to carry out the duties that have been passed down from the advisory group. And then the other pretty much 30 minutes, I'm hoping to keep these meetings to less than an hour, uh, will be on specific concerns, questions, or problems that are arising at your college. So if you're you're coming up saying you can't get a video to load or you have an instructor who is not wanting to um, publish their content to open or you need um, content for a specific course, um, th that's the last 30 minutes is actually going to be working on problem solving and brainstorming to help you guys out with your your um, courses in your colleges. <clears throat> and the only other thing I have is right now we have resources um, in addition to the Canvas course that has a uh, CCDY license course coming up. Um, the there's a video here explaining the T the CCBY licenses as well as this Open for Us org is where the official DOL posts all of its information for CCBY and open, um, as well as, um, I'll have to get that on here, it's the um, Workforce 3, it's www.workforce3one, 3 is a numeral, I think it's .org is where DOL posts all of its webinars concerning all the tax free grants. So I'll go ahead and send up that. Workforce. Three. Okay. Um, and then just remember the fact that we do have a CHAMP URL dashboard that ties, that has direct links to OER repositories, meaning it's uh, um, Wisconsin Online, Advanced Manufacturing, it's the Mechanics, uh, Machinist and Engineering, M-E-T-E-C group has an OER and there's other OERs there. Um, and that's all I have. Do you have any other questions? Um, so our next meeting, um, unless you guys request something sooner, will be on Thursday, March 6th at 9 o'clock. Um, anybody who's interested in working on the MOOC will have a meeting February 13th at 9 o'clock. And just send me an email if you're interested in working on the MOOC. And that's all I have. All right, guys. Since I don't have any, go this ahead, is, John. This is very good for starting some uh, content here. I'll need to, need to try to digest some of it, uh, but appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. If you guys have any questions on the material or the slides that are up on um, the instructional design cohort group, don't hesitate to email me or give me a call. Great. All right. Okay. Gonna... All right. Bye, Bruce. Have a good day.